is so cute. Oh my gosh, we need more of this Mattel. Keep doing this. There's a lot of asymmetry happening. They're like, we want angles everywhere. <laughs> Hey everybody, happy Valentine's Day. I am really excited for today's video because I, first of all, I love Monster High. Um, but secondly, when I saw this coming out, I had mixed emotions at first and I will get into it, um, but I have it in person. I love the set. I'm really excited that I was able to get it. Also, I'm really excited that Mattel is like, finally realizing people want to buy these dolls. So I think they're making more of them because they're available <laughs> and or they're getting them out on time. I, I don't know what's going on um, because like last year in 2022, it was just like so difficult to get your hands on some of these collector or limited edition dolls or the holiday Draculaura or, you know, like it was just, it, it was a nightmare. And now it's like, they're finally starting to be a little easier. People are able to breathe for some of these new releases, you know, and as far as me recording this today, this is even still available online. And it's been available both on target, oops, on target.com and on Amazon. And I checked and even the holiday Draculaura, which I, I have somewhere back there. Um, <laughs> she is uh, available now as well. I know that so many people are having trouble getting a hold of her because she sold out right away and then she came back in stock and then sold out and anyway it's been a whole thing but she's available now too and what i thought was really interesting i noticed that the new haunt couture frankie from the masquerade collection that doll is still available like it it, it went on sale yesterday at 9 a.m my time uh i'm in california so pacific time and um it's still available now like over 24 hours later and that's crazy because those dolls usually sell out in a matter of minutes i'm really curious to know are people just not buying that doll which i don't think is the case because scalpers would have still snatched it up or maybe mattel fixed the problem with the scalpers buying them all up and the, the robots that bought them automatically or something. I don't know either that or maybe they're finally making more. So they're available. People, I think maybe that's what it was like Mattel realized, oh yes, there is a market for these kind of dolls, these G1 dolls <laughs> and people want to buy them. So maybe they're making more of them. Um, I wasn't able to get that doll because I just didn't have the money. Uh, unfortunately, but I do get paid in a couple days and if she's still available, I'm going to be ordering her for, uh, available from Mattel directly. I'm, I don't want to pay secondhand prices if I'm able to get her you know, retail. But um, anyway, that was a really long intro for me to say happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> I decorated. I've got some, I mean, you, you can kind of say, oh, and I also, I haven't shown it yet. I'm probably going to do a, another really short video where I show off my um, collection, but I, I rearranged everything to be in rainbow order. So up at the top, you've got like orange or sorry, red, orange, yellow dolls and toys and stuff like that. Down here is green to teal to blue. And then down here is like purple to pink and then but down here is white to black and gray and everything um and that took me so long to figure out and i had to take everything down dust it put everything back up and you know find a way to make it all fit and everything and it was not the easiest <laughs> <laughs> and it took a while. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've got like little hearts everywhere and like the little metallic heart like string across. And I've got, you know, this thing that says be mine and a happy Valentine's Day balloon and stuff. I'm really festive. <laughs> I was talking early in my video earlier today uh, in this this one when I reviewed this beautiful girl earlier today. Um, I was talking about how I genuinely really enjoy Valentine's Day. And I've been single majority of my life. I think I've only been in a relationship on Valentine's Day two times and both of them they were fun they, there wasn't anything special but I never really put a lot of pressure on Valentine's Day um, I just enjoy being festive <laughs> I like an excuse to decorate um, I love these little Valentine's
Valentine's Day cards that you would give give out in like elementary school. Um, I freaking love these. And in my last video, I opened a letter from Jill. Jill, thank you again. Um, but Jill sent me a card as with a really nice and really long letter. <laughs> and then also um, one of these cards. And it's so funny because earlier in the video, I was just talking about how much I love these little cards from elementary school. Uh, if you want to see that story, go watch that video. But um, it's so funny that like after I said that that story and then I opened that and one of them was in there, I got really excited. But in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Monster High 2 pack uh, and I'm really excited for this. All right. So first, let's look at the box. Here's the front of the box. I love this because you've got these snakes here that kind of create kind of a heart shape. You know, you've got the, the bottom and like whatever. Um, but it's like, it's really cute. And I love that like, Snakes are a really good theme for these two, obviously, because Deuce is a Gorgon or, you know, son of the Gorgons and um, has the snake hair. And then Cleo is Egyptian. And in Egypt, um, serpents or snakes are one of the animals that uh, I think they probably like worshipped all animals <laughs> associated that all the different animals with different gods. But, um, you know, snakes are very important in Egyptian mythology and Egyptian culture as well. So like it just goes really well together. And her her original pet was Hisset. So, um, you know, because oh, I just realized they're two like this is like this one is representing Deuce and this one is representing Cleo because it's got like the little well it's got lashes which are beautiful but it also has the little um, heart gem that she has on her cheek and everything so um, but yeah I love this I when I bought this I was like I'm just gonna get one I don't need to do the like one in box one out of box because uh, I'm gonna open it but now I'm kind of regretting it because I kind of want to keep this in the box and get another one to take out of the box but it's too late and they're really expensive. They're not really expensive. They're only it's $60. So $30 per doll. It's not bad for a collector doll. So I'm not going to complain at all. Here is the back of the box. So um, I love it when they do photography on the back of the dolls. Um, I don't know why, but I just really like that. And you've got some really pretty like roses and stuff like that. Um, what does it say? So it says something in several different languages. Um, so, okay. So it says Monster High Holiday Love Edition. So it's not Valentine's Day dolls, technically. That's not what it's like the title. Um, it says that on Amazon though, but it says Monster High Holiday Love Edition. Uh, and it says love is in the air as Deuce Gorgon pulls out all the stops to impress Cleo Denial on the most romantic day of the year, which by the way, also happens to be Draculaura's birthday. Fun fact. And then it just says the same thing like over and over in like a bunch of different language. Oh no, no, there's more. <laughs> what? It says this Gorgon is dressed to impress in his favorite snake print jacket and diamond scale printed trousers. He even risked a stone cold Medusa stare by plucking a rare monster flower from his mom's haunted garden. Oh, <laughs> Cleo Denial is all wrapped up in a gorgeous dress with mummified details with a heart-shaped snake bodice and heels, ready to gift her boo with his favorite gourm gourmet, gourmet chocolates. Gourmet. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sparks are sure to fly as these two ghoulishly glam monsters celebrate their undying love. Oh, I like that. I get all sappy and get all mushy stuff and whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so I really like these. Now, I want to get these out of the box really quick because I do want to talk about them and talk about like the mixed feelings that I had. It'll be easier to show you what I'm talking about once I get them out of the box. So I'm going to do that really quick and I will be right back. All right, so I've got them out of the box and these dolls are so cute. I really, really like these. Okay. So there's a couple things that I want to go over. I'm going to try and be as efficient as I can with this because there's a lot. <laughs> so first of all, you get these really cute little cards. Um, they're just little pieces of cardboard, um, but these are kind of like little Valentine's Day cards. So this one says, be my creepy Valentine, uh, you know, so Monster High, you know, they have a lot of like bats and worms and eyeballs and stuff like that. Uh, and this one I really like, it's the two snakes creating a heart shape with around like an amethyst is that an amethyst is the purple one? No, oh, this is kind of a pink color. I don't know. Anyway, it's like a, a, a heart-shaped gemstone.
Stone. Uh, that's really cute. I like these. So I'm going to hold on to these as well and put them with these other little Valentine's Day cards I got with the last one. Then it comes with this accessory, which honestly I think is probably my favorite accessory. <laughs> it's one of my favorite doll accessories I think I've ever really seen, but definitely the, my favorite one in this box. But okay, so it is a little heart-shaped box that has looks like a skelet, like the face uh, with the little bow here. It's a red, it's a box of candies and it actually opens. So like in the box, it was opened and it was two separate pieces, but oh shoot, I closed it. Now I'm not gonna be able to open it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Anyway, so it does fully snap closed, but then you open it and there's actual little candies in there. This is so cute. Oh my gosh, we need more of this Mattel. Keep doing this. Yes, I love it. <laughs> this is so cute. And so in here, there's like a little spider web. There's a scarab beetle. And what's that last thing? Oh, it's like a little coffin. It looks like a little coffin. So, you know, just you know, typical candies that you'd give to a Monster High student. Um, <laughs> but this is so cool. And they're they're 3D, like they're actually printed or uh, molded to it. But then they did the UV resin to print the images on it. So it actually looks like decent quality. Like you can see the details in it, like the details in the scarab beetle shell and the spider web. And then like on the casket here or whatever this this on the coffin it's got something it looks like I don't know there's something splattered on it. it's probably like a chocolate coffin with um, like caramel on it or something like that but I absolutely love this this is so cool now the dolls are kind of holding the rest of the thing so let me just show well first of all um, it does come with a certificate of authenticity it looks like uh, is that what it is yeah certificate of authenticity that these are authentic Monster High holiday love edition dolls they do both come with a just a basic classic Monster High stand in black. You know, they have the little C-clips there, which by the way, I found out that they are called C-clips. That's what these little waist hugger things are called. Um, also, it comes with this really cute heart-shaped balloon, which I love, but it is very heavy. This heart on top is a solid piece of plastic. It's not hollow at all. Um, and that's a problem. And the reason why that's a problem is let me show you. So there is a little clip or, you know, place for her to put her hand there. But here's the problem. If I let go of this, she cannot hold that. <laughs> now I have seen tiny mylar balloons before on like a scale that would work for a doll. Like the, like, like when I say mylar balloon, I'm talking about like these kind of balloons, uh, which I think that's basically what this balloon is supposed to be. Just like it's gold with a spider web on it. But um, this is cheaper to produce because it's literally just, they make the mold and they fill it with plastic and they're, and it creates the shape and everything. Whereas a Mylar balloon, they have to actually make little balloons. If they did have like a full Mylar balloon on it, the doll, first of all, this set would probably be more expensive, but also it would be, she'd be able to hold it. It would be much lighter. So they made a fix for that. In the packaging with Cleo's stand, there is this extra little attachment here, which is really cool because it goes on the back of her stand. So like she's got the little C clip here for the doll, but then back here is this thing. And this clips onto the string or the whatever for the, the balloon and it holds it up. So look at this. So now you can have the doll on the stand here and then have the balloon clipped into this thing. And then all you have to do is pose her hand right. And now she can actually hold it. So, you know, it looks like she's holding it, but you know, like there's actually just a little support thing back here. And since it's black and her hair is black and the rest of the stand is black, it just kind of like uh, fades in. So you don't really see it that much. It's not super noticeable, but it's just so cool. Like I, I love the fact that they made it so that way she can actually hold the balloon. Now, Cleo did also come with a little purse. So this is, I, I think I've seen this mold before, if I'm being honest, which I don't care. Like some people get really upset for some reason. They get really like heated when doll companies reuse the mold for something. I don't care as long as it fits the theme. Now I've seen this, I think for a probably a Barbie or whatever, but you know, Mattel can reuse 
their molds if they want to. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, this is not, it's not for a Barbie, it is for Greta. The Monster High Skelector Greta, I'm not gonna get her out because it was a nightmare trying to set all that up in that show right there. But she has the little, here's a picture. She has a little purse with a uh, spike on it from Gremlins, and but hers is in black. And then this one for Cleo is in gold and it's got the little um, hearts all over it. And you've got the two skelettes. One is a pink mummy for Cleo and one is a little green Gorgon for Deuce. So like I said, I don't mind when they reuse stuff if it makes sense for the design of the doll. And in this case, it looks so cute. And I really do like this. And I like this mold anyway. I think that this is a really cute purse. It does not open or anything, but that's okay. Now Deuce does come with a couple of accessories as well. He comes with this little rose that he is holding, which is really cute because it's got little teeth on it. <laughs> or those eyes. You know what, looking at these, I can't tell if these are eyes or little fangs. Cause like, at first I thought they were fangs because there's two of them, but then I realized it's like there's two on one side and two on the other. So either it's two pairs of fangs or they're supposed to be little eyes. So like, I thought it was like, oh no, 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 these are, what? Okay, so within the rows, the center here has lips and I think those are supposed to be fangs, but it to me, it kind of looks like there is four fangs. I could be wrong. Like, correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments. Do you think that those are fangs on the flower or do you think that those are eyes? Either way, it is creepy cute. It's this really cute little rose that he can hold to give to Cleo. And I like that they, you know, did the different colors for the plastic and everything. He also comes with his sunglasses, which are rubber banded to his leg. Hold on. Okay, and to his hand. <laughs> Anyway, so he comes with his little sunglasses, which of course he can wear, and they are like the perfect fit. They actually fit him really well, and I like that. Um, on this side, it's a little weird because he's got his little his little earring there, um, which I forgot what this piercing is called, but it's the one that kind of goes through the cartilage of your ear instead of the earlobe. But it's kind of in the way for pushing this down all the way, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, so this is what he looks like wearing his sunglasses. You know what, and since we're here, Let's take a look at Deuce. So here is Deuce Gorgon. Um, this is the, I believe the original mold for him because he's got his little mohawk where the, the snakes are standing up instead of where they're kind of floppy. Uh, I think in later releases of Deuce, they started giving him the floppy hair in later G1 as well as in G2 and even G3. But um, this is kind of cool. I like that they did that. It's like he styled his hair to try and, you know, look cool for the date. Overall, his screening looks pretty good. His right eye looks like it might be a little bit smaller than his left eye. I don't know if that's just me or not, but other than that, I don't see any wonkiness. I don't see any defects or any scratches or anything on his face, so that is good. Looking at his outfit, um, he's got this like snake pattern uh, jacket, which is separate from the shirt, which I love. I hate it when everything is connected and I love it when they when they do separate everything. Um, underneath his shirt is a sleeveless shirt, which honestly, I'm okay. It saves on fabric. It saves on the cost of production. Also, it's kind of hard to put like when a doll has long sleeves and you put a jacket over it, it's kind of hard to do that. Um, so it you know, just saves on time as well. So like he is sleeveless, but that's fine because you never really see it when the doll is like this. Plus if there's two layers of fabric, it's harder to pose him. So I'm actually okay with them not having the, the long sleeves on the undershirt. I just really like that you've got the shirt, which is separate from the pants and separate from the jacket. Like it's three full separate pieces. And I love that. Speaking of which, I'm kind of obsessed with his pants <laughs> because it's a snake pattern. But every so often, some of these scales are metallic and reflective. And I love that detail. I didn't know that until I got him out of the box. I just thought it was a fun like snakes, snake scale pattern. Um, but seeing that it actually has this little bit of sparkle on there. I love this. I kind of wish that his jacket matched his pants. Like I wish it was all the same fabric or material, um, especially since the pants kind of feel like a cotton material, uh, like a twill or something like, you know, pant material. Um, and the jacket is more of like a satin material, which is okay. It doesn't always have to be matchy matchy, but um, I think I think I probably would have liked 
the look more if it was all like a cohesive, or maybe it would look too much like a tuxedo at that point. I, I don't know. I just, I like the pattern. I like the material they used for the pants <laughs> and I wouldn't mind if they used it more. Here's his shoes. Now this is a reused mold of his shoes. I believe I've seen these before in G1, I want to say, um, but these are different because these are gold and they have little hearts with like a snake face printed directly onto the shoes with little extra details here. Um, but I think I, I want to say that I've seen these because they kind of look like vans. They're like they're vans, but with like a quilted molded texture on them. And they have like the little studs molded around the front uh, of the sole as well. All right, let me put his little sunglasses on so he doesn't turn anybody to stone. Oh, there we go. OK, I was able to get the, the glasses on a little bit better this time. So now they're actually fitting the way they are. I like how his eyebrows look over the glasses. That looks so cute. All right, I'm going to put him back on his little stand. Let me give him his little rose again. Oh, and before I forget, let's look at Deuce's articulation. So he's got the same articulation as the G1 Monster High doll boys have. Not not his original one. His original release, the very first one that came out, he did not have a joint at his wrists, but this one does. So he has movement at the wrist, at the elbow, the shoulder, the head. He has articulation at the hip the knee and he also has articulation at the ankles i don't know if these are these hand molds the same as other g1s i don't know if these are unique to this set so he can actually like hold the rose or whatever because these look different than i remember but i could just be remembering wrong oh my god he is so cute i love how you can pose him like he's he's literally ready for a date you know like he's there he's maybe he's a little bit nervous oh i, I forgot to point out that he has a little tie as well on his uh shirt it's just attached like it's just it's just sewn on right there but um i love the fact that it's a separate little tie like that that looks i love those kind of little extra details when they decide to add it on i'm not a huge fan of that print in fact i don't think that that print really goes with this outfit but um, i think they were just doing it to like give a little pop of color plus it kind of actually matches cleo's outfit so i guess that's why it was just to kind of tie in the colors together huh <laughs> tie in the <laughs> no pun intended <laughs> but look at that i mean like you hear your doorbell ring and you go and open the door and you, you see him standing there like he's already he's like holding his jacket with the one hand and he's got the rose in the other and it's like presented out like here this is for you i love that that is so cute all right let's look at the in my opinion the star of this show we've got cleo here and May I just say that Cleo is always stunning. I mean, there's there's very few missteps when it comes to Cleo dolls, and most of the time they're budget dolls. Um, but I, I really like this. So first things first. So let's look at Cleo now. All right, I want to look at her face. I think she is so pretty. I got a really good one. Um, also, full disclosure, I actually ordered two of these dolls. And um, what I ended up doing is I ordered one from Target because that's where I first saw it pop up. Then I saw that it was available on Amazon and I panic ordered and I ordered a second one, um, you know, one, one from Amazon. So I ordered one from Target and one from Amazon. And then I was like, why did I do that? I only need one. I'm not going to like do whatever. And then instead of canceling one of them, uh, I was like, well, actually, let let me get them both in and then I can look at them and decide which one I want to keep and then I'll return the other one. Um, I ended up keeping the one from Target and returning the one from Amazon, but they were so good that it kind of didn't matter. I could have uh, kept either of them and I would have been happy with the doll that I got because they both looked so good. It was really hard to like, it, I had to get down to like nitty gritty minor details. And I think that they did such a good job, at least from what I've seen so far, the quality control on these is pretty good and or at least pretty consistent you know it's I'm not really seeing a bunch of wonky eye although I think some people maybe haven't gotten theirs yet or if they have they haven't like posted online that they got like wonky eyes or def defects or anything um which is good and I'm hoping nobody does but um you know like same thing with the holiday Draculaura the quality control seemed to be pretty consistent. Um, I had ended up ordering three of them and I returned one, but I kept the other two, one took out of the box and one that I left in the box. Um, but all of them looked really good. I mean, obviously when you mass produce anything, it, you know, there, there's always a little bit of room for mistakes or for factory errors, stuff like that. But generally speaking, you know, knock on wood, 
<laughs> I've been pretty lucky with these dolls, uh, you know, not really getting any with like major defects or at least being able to get a couple of them so that way I can choose and then send them back. I think the last time that I had an issue was the real drama dolls just because I never saw those in store and I had to order them online and they I ordered them. I was really lucky because like like minutes after I ordered them, they sold out again. So um, I had to basically deal with whichever ones I got. <laughs> And um, some of them did have wonky eyes, like my wonky Becca, which I, my, or my Dracu, Drac, Dracu, Wonk, well, I think it was won wonky Becca is what I called her. The wonky eyed Draculaura that I've got back here on my shelf somewhere. Um, yeah, that, that one I just kind of had to deal with the one that I got. Um, but luckily this Cleo looks stunning. I don't see any flaws. If you see a flaw, don't tell me because I want to still love her. <laughs> I'm still going to love her regardless. But like I said, I don't see any issues. Um, I think her bangs look really good. I don't know why they decided to... Okay, let's get into the, um, like, my mixed emotions thing that I was mentioning earlier. First of all, she's got her hair cut at an angle, like a weird thing. They're, you know, they're getting creative. It is what it is. I'm not going to, like, fault them for that. Um, hold on. Let me take her off the stand really quick. There goes the balloon. Next, let's talk about her whole outfit and accessories, starting from the top to the bottom. Here's the doll. We can take a look at her dress and everything, which, first of all, I love the color combination. I love that Cleo's color scheme is teal and gold. I love that combination. I think it goes really, really well together. So we've got this headband here, which is molded plastic. It's gold. Um, she's got these really cute earrings, which are like drop earrings. And they're the vacuumized metal kind of metallic looking. And they're in like heart cut gemstones shaped. Um, she has tinsel in her hair. Her hair is saran and it's a really high quality saran. Um, I realized that there are some dolls from the 90s that um, use saran as well, like this doll. Um, she has saran hair as well. Uh, also, some of the other dolls that I've opened recently on my channel, which you can't see because I'm zoomed in right now. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, they have saran, but the saran... Oh, here, this is a good example. Um, this Ariel, she has saran as well, but it is a very different... Um, grade of saran like this is a really high quality grade of saran and this is okay i love any saran is better than polypropylene in my opinion um but this is a lower quality saran than this is this is so much nicer the ones that they use for these monster high g1 uh, alumni style dolls as they like to call them um but she has really, really nice quality hair. It just feels so nice. Um, also, she does have tinsel in her hair. The tinsel is interesting because it is similar to her original doll's tinsel. Um, but this time, instead of it being gold and silver, it is a red and silver, which is an interesting pop of color that they decided to add. Um, her hair is mostly black, but then it does have some streaks of like this lighter blonde in it, um, which I think usually she has streaks of more like a brown like a light brown brunette kind of in it. So this is them kind of like changing it up a little. Her dress is this asymmetrical one sleeve, like long sleeve style kind of asymmetrical mermaid dress. <laughs> There's a lot of asymmetry happening. They're like, we want angles everywhere. Cause you know, with her bangs like this, the shoulder like this, the cut of the dress being like this, you know, this hem and then the bottom, which, you know, kind of ties into the whole mummy wraps, which you can see the sleeve on the top right here is kind of like a see-through kind of mesh material. The dress itself is kind of like a satin material, got like this mermaid cut underneath. It's got this layer of like a mesh and oh, that's interesting, I didn't notice that. It's like a purple tool material, and then this gold mesh on the uh, end here. The print of the dress is where a lot of people kind of get hung up on this doll. And let me tell you that pictures don't really do it justice. I do like it more in person than I did seeing it online, but... Um, this is still not my favorite print for this. I think that this print kind of cheapens the doll a little, for lack of a better description. Like, I don't know, it just, it seems like this is a doll that's clearly marketed towards the collectors, the, you know, OG Monster High fans, stuff like that. But this print that they decided to use, it like, it's not bad, but it just kind of looks younger, I get like, you know, kitty kind of uh, elementary. I don't know how to describe it, but it, it kind of looks like something that a toddler would wear. 
um, but I don't know. I just I think if they just had the the hearts on it and didn't have the skeletts, I would probably like it more. Um, or if they did the whole thing in the mummy wraps or or something, I don't. Or even make it just solid. Um, I would have liked it probably a little bit more. But it looks just a little bit weird. I'm getting hung up on the print of the of the the pattern of the fabric. But like I said, it's not bad. I don't hate it, and I do like it more in person than I did when I initially saw the pictures. So, uh, and it also, some of the hearts that are all over it are metallic and reflective, just like Deuce's pants were. So I like that they kind of brought that element over to her look as well. And like I said, now that I actually see her and have her out of the box, I definitely like her more. <laughs> I do really like the addition of like this little cuff right here and this little whatever you want to call this, this um, leg thing. <laughs> it's not a leg warmer. I don't know. But anyway, the mummy wraps basically added on. I do like the addition of that. Um, once again, it's a little weird having like I probably would have taken the cuff off, I think, but leave this here or leave the cuff on and take this off. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't hate it. I do like the inclusion of that, but I also think that like her dress could probably, her dress could actually be shorter in my opinion. Like, okay. Okay. Th this would have fixed the whole thing. Honestly, like if, if, uh, wait, can I, okay. I don't know if I can really do much about this, but if I was to, oh, here we go. Okay, now this is just a personal style preference for me. But if I was to design this dress, I think I would have done it like this. Like, make it into like a fit and flare party dress instead of that mermaid silhouette. I think this looks so much better. Like, it's just me. But even with this pattern that they decided to use, like with this print, with this one sleeve, the cuff, and this legging part right here, um, I actually really like the way that this looks. And if I... I might actually stitch this, like hem it, not hem it, but like make it shorter, like stitch it this way because I really like this now. <laughs> I like this so much better. I don't know. I don't want the material to get too wrinkled. So I'm going to bring the, the skirt back down. But yeah, I mean, like when you compare the two, um, I kind of like it better. And even like you could keep the pattern, but just make it shorter. And I think I would have liked it so much more. I love this heart shaped snake bodice that she has. This is probably my favorite part of her outfit. I love this. I think that this looks so good. It's not a ta not like connected in the back, so it's easy to just kind of clip on and clip off. But I love the fact that it snakes and it creates a little heart and it does that whole thing. I think that that looks so good over the dress. Like I think without it, the dress would be missing a lot. And I think that with it, it looks so good. Um, let's move down to the shoes because I'm obsessed with these shoes. All right, so looking at these shoes, these are so cute. They are teal and gold, and I absolutely love this color combination. Um, also, the heels are snakes that are coiled up in the shape of a heart, and the snakes are painted gold. The shoe itself is like an, uh, it's teal, but it's also iridescent. Like it has a um, pearlescent sheen added to it. And I don't know if it's the, the plastic that it's molded from is this color, or if it's a, a layer of paint over it. But either way, I am obsessed with these shoes. I love this. I love the mold. I love the shape. And I, I love the colors. It's, it's so good. <laughs> so needless to say, the stuff that I pointed out is the reason I had mixed emotions about this doll. Um, talking about the design of the dress, I think was the biggest one. Like the, the pattern that they used with this silhouette. Um, but after like bringing the skirt up so it's not so long, I liked it. 20 times more. <laughs> it's 20% cooler. No, I, I really liked the way that it looked that way, even with the existing print. So I think for this doll, either it should have been a different pattern that didn't look so like childlike or make it into like a fun fit and flare party dress, I think would look better with this pattern. Um, but either way, I definitely love, I love the whole set. I love, this is a really cute deuce and I really, really like him as well. Um, I really like this set. I think that they look so good and I'm so happy that I got them um, because just from the pictures online and Partially, I'll be honest, like I was letting other people's criticisms kind of like cloud my own judgment, but other people's criticisms were kind of making me be like, eh, maybe I don't want to get it, you know? <laughs> uh, I'm glad that I didn't listen to that and I kind of used my own judgment and decided to get the doll set because 
I love these dolls. I really, really like them. And I'm just finding a newfound love for Cleo. I think my my favorite character from Monster High to collect the dolls for used to be Laguna. And it, in a way, it still is. Some of my absolute favorite Monster High dolls of all time are the Laguna dolls. But I have always loved Cleo. She was always in second place. But recently, she's kind of bumped up to first place. And I, I think... Part of that is G3 is to blame because I feel like they just, they've done Laguna dirty. Like I tried to be positive when I got the first Laguna doll and I do like her, but um, I just, I'm not a huge fan of the way that they're designing her outfits and her color scheme. Um, I really kind of do wish she was still blue and, uh, but also some of the outfits like for the uh, Skultimate Secrets dolls. Um, I'm just not feeling them like the way that that her outfits are designed. They're just not my style. They're not bad They're just not my style. So unfortunately, I haven't been a huge Laguna fan recently for G3 But like I at least I've got the real drama Laguna, which is one of my absolute favorite dolls and um, the Haunt Couture Laguna is also one of my favorite dolls. So um, I really have those but uh, Cleo is killing it and I think Cleo is probably my new favorite character uh, for Monster High to collect the dolls. So and I absolutely plan on getting the Cleo Masquerade Haunt Couture doll. I love that doll. I love the design. People are like, where's the quality? Like whatever. It's like, mm, no, I love it. I love the design. Like they're thinking it's too simple but I, I love it the way it's designed as is and I need that doll. <laughs> So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Anyway, I'm gonna get going for right now because uh, I did do two videos for today, for Valentine's Day specifically, but um, I do have a couple other videos that I want to film and I wanna get at least one more video out later this week. So that way I have two days where there are videos coming out for you guys. Um, but I really appreciate you guys sticking around and watching. If you have uh, stuck around this long, leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts on Valentine's Day. Like, do you enjoy Valentine's Day? How, do you have like um, a fun story for Valentine's Day that, that you had in the past? Or are you one of the people that just really don't like Valentine's Day? Let me know in the comments because I'm really curious. Like I said, I'm the one of the people that just enjoys to an excuse to be festive and celebrate anyway. So I really do like Valentine's Day, even though I am single and I'm not, you know, it's not about the romance, just about, I don't know, love in general and being mushy. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get going for right now, but thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you next time. <laughs> I just hit my umbrella light, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> If you like this video, you can let me know by hitting thumbs up. You can check out some of my other videos by clicking one of the links on the screen. I post new videos every week, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified every time I upload. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.